children everyone in this class we'll try to understand class 7th cbse chapter that is motion and time of chapter 13 motion and time we'll try to understand in this class we know how it is motion and what is see what is motion try to understand first of all is a change in position of the object with the time and with respect to the reference frame also let us imagine with respect to this trace that trace is the reference frame from where you can see this car is moving or not with respect to reference frame and the type we can tell the object is moving or not moving see motion is nothing but change in position of an object with the time and with respect to reference frame so with respect to suppose with respect to your walls of the room you are just moving that means with after two minutes you are where is your position your position is here so wall position is still there only after two minutes also then the wall is called as a reference frame with respect to this reference frame your position is changing okay and with respect to reference frame and the type your position is changing then you are said to be at motion if not you are said to be at rest position okay the rest and motion are two different things with respect to the reference frame and with respect to the time if object is changes its position it is called as motion if object does not changes its position then it is called as a rest in the motion they have different types of motion i think in the nature we have observed that cars is moving in a straight road the pendulum is oscillating like this and like this it will go when you move the force it will go like this and it will oscillating and you can see the planets how they're moving around the sun the planets they move in a circular orbit elliptical orbit different types of motion in nature you might have observed right children see or let us take some example motion along this straight line see how the car is moving along this straight line path this kind of motion or you can see the sun rays how the sun rays are moving they are almost they come in a straight line path i think in the light chapter of six standard you learned light having a rectilinear motion that means which are moving in a straight line path that is called we call rectilinear rectilinear rectil means what it is a correct linear means straight line okay rectil means it is a correct and the linear means straight line that is what we call in a straight line motion object any object is moving that is what we call rectilinear motion example motion of the car in a straight line or you can see the light the light always are moving in straight line path that is what rectilinear proper propagation of light and then you can see other example other is periodic motion periodic motion is after regular interval of time the motion is completing suppose imagine after two seconds the body will come here again will go again come again go so after regular interval of time it will go and come back so this type of motion what we call periodic motion or you can take the planets all the planets around the sun how they will go after one year it will come to same but it will go one take one year suppose imagine earth earth take one year to come back to same position wherever this today is the earth is there next day next year same day it will come to same position that means it is what we call periodic after regular interval of the time it will come back to same position or we can tell it is a repeated event okay anything is repeating repeating events are occurring occurring then that is also called as periodic motion okay here pendulum bob you can soon observe no? it will go and come back in the same position this is also called example of periodic motion or you can tell the planets moon or any in periodic motions next one is circular motion see the wheels of a car how it is moving the wheels of the car they are rotating about a fixed point okay about a fixed point the distance from that point to the center is always fixed in that path only the object is moving okay about a fixed point some distance from the center to this point they will go in a circular path you can see wheels are going in a circular path of automobiles okay all this example of you taken one thread connected the one thread using some thread you going to connect one stool put your hand here and try to rotate it will go in a circular path right children so motion of the earth around the sun it is actually elliptical but nature will just take it as a circular path examples of motion and what is motion motion is nothing but change in position of the object with respect to you need to write clearly means with respect to time and the reference frame that is important reference frame is a fixed point from where you're going to take your observation okay suppose bus stop is a reference frame from the bus stop you're going to take your you bus is moving or not okay from bus stop you're going to tell bus is moving or not with respect to time after two minutes 
bus is at this position after 4 minutes the bus will come to this position that means bus is at motion suppose after 2 minutes also bus here after 4 minutes also bus is here. after 6 minutes bus is here. then body is at not it is at rest position clear children what is rest and what is motion i hope this is clear and what are the types of motion also clear three types of motion they discussed here rectilinear motion or straight line motion periodic motion and circular motion yeah see any object is moving with some distance and we having some time after some time and it is moving that means what it is covering it is covering some distance in a given time so combination of the distance and the time we are going to define in physics the term what we call as a speed clear children if object taken more time we can tell more less speed if object is take cover more distance in a given time we can tell it is a more speed right children i think you have experienced that suppose uh, you are just running this imagine you and your friend are standing okay you and your friend are standing suppose in a time of five minutes in a time of five minutes you will cover this much of distance and your friend will cover a more distance then you will tell who is faster definitely this one is the fast compared to this that means who are covering more distance in a given time in a five minutes of time okay whatever the time in a given time you cover a more distance that means speed is directly proportional to distance covered okay if cover more distance then you are a fast if you cover less distance in a given time then you are slow right children that means speed is directly proportional to the distance factor at the same time imagine a car a and a car b both are started at a say they cover a same distance okay it is also need to cover a same distance and let us take the final destination they need to cover but car a taken five minutes to reach his destination and car b taken only uh, let us imagine he taken only two minutes to cover his destination now think children who is fast and who is slow who cover a more definitely your answer is right five minutes and are two minutes who is faster now the two minutes that means who taken a less time the so he was a fast and he was a slow that means who taken a more time there who taken less time there fast right so you know very well that so sorry the speed is inversely proportional to the time so if taken more time speed will be less if taken less time speed will be more so combinedly you can write distance and the time so distance is let us take other color yeah so distance is sorry not distance speed is directly proportional to distance traveled when a distance traveled is more speed is more and inversely proportional to the time that means speed is inversely proportional to time one by time we're going to write if speed is more distances speed sorry time is more taken speed will be less like that so we can write the definition of the speed speed is a distance covered by an object in a unit time how much body will cover a distance in unit time that is what we call as the speed of the object so if a car covers a hundred kilometers in one hour and a car covers and a car covers a distance of 50 kilometers in one hour then the speed of a car is more than the speed of the bus okay so you are given car and a bus right instead of a and b they taken car and bus so here car will cover 100 meters in one hour bus taken 50 kilometers in one hour that means let us imagine bus car move is faster right car covers 100 meters and the same distance to cover bus how much bus will take a bus covers only 50 km that means half of the distance only it is traveled that means we can tell the less distance right they cover less distance so he was a slow distance directly proportional car covers more distance so he was fast so like that we're going to decide who is fast and slow that means which is speed having more car having the more speed and bus having the less speed so since the speed of the most object is not constant then speed is something but the average speed we're going to take many cases we're going to speed take average speed because suppose imagine road is like humps and again drums so, so when humps will come the car will reduce the speed but bus will go easily because it won't have big tires it will go easily that's why we're not taking at the humps and some way we're going to take average speed what is the total time taken by total time taken by total distance travel so speed is nothing but total distance traveled total distance covered or traveled by time taken that is what we can do in the speed or we also write in a simple way speed is equals to distance traveled by time taken or if you want to remember this just take the 
triangle form and you can write here speed distance and time speed is equals to distance by time taken you can write like that okay speed is equals to distance by time speed is distance by time so we can write like this our time is equals to speed and distance clear children like this you remember the formula speed is distance by time so you want to write the unit in physics if they are some problems they are except, expected the unit what is a s unit cgs unit so distance you know how you going to measure the distance suppose that between the villages in kilometers so between the very small places we can take meter so meter is the s unit of distance and s unit of time is second so unit you can write it is meter per second is the si unit it is what it is a is the unit of distance and cgs unit means it is a centimeter per second is the cgs unit of time sorry of speed so this is about the speed clear children what is speed it is a distance covered by an object in a unit time that is nothing but a speed of an object the formula is given by total distance covered by total time taken their unit is meters per second if you want to write a dimension formula also write m mass is not there so mass is zero only length is there and time is there m l t minus one this is a dimension formula of the speed now coming to the types of the speed so for understanding types of the speed say uniform speed and a non uniform speed so in how to say uniform speed suppose this distance car need to cover in one key in one hour in the second hour in the third hour in the, all the time in a fourth hour body cover equal is you can observe here x distance x distance x distance x distance that means in all the time okay in one hour also he this distance in second hour also same distance third hour also same distance if it is the type of the condition that means equal distance traveled in equal interval of the time then the body is said to be uniform motion okay children you can tell the planets around the sun they are in uniform motion okay uniform motion is equal distance traveled in equal interval of time okay the speed of an object is a constant it is something but uniform the speed is constant or we can tell one more word if a speed is constant when speed is constant distance traveled by time taken is same then it is what we call as a uniform speed next non uniform motion is the speed of an object keep on changing this called on suppose imagine road is not straight road if it is straight road we can go uniform speed Imagine road is made up of some humps again, dumps, deeper dumps. In that condition, we cannot go with the constant speed always. Sometimes we need to put the brakes again, increase again, put the brake like that. So in that condition, we can write it as a non-uniform. In a straight line motion, means we can take it as a uniform. Okay, uniform speed and uniform motion and non-uniform motion. This is clear, children. What is speed and what is uniform motion and what is non-uniform motion? I hope this is clear. If you have any doubt, once again, just fuse and read. Yeah. Next, try to understand here how to measure the time. Measurement of time. How we are going to time measure? Time is measured by using the clocks, watches, and the clocks, watches are used in the periodic motion. Okay. They need to use periodic motion. First of all, what is the time, children? Yeah. You know very well, children. What is the time? It is a some event occurring. Okay, some event is occurring or taking place. So that is what we call as a time. So time is a measurement measured by using clocks. You can see the clocks, wall clocks, table clocks. So many type of watches, digital watches. So many things, analog everything. So time we going to measure. Olden days they don't have watches like this. But even though they are measuring the time, so using days. Okay, that is also kind of time only. Days. morning evening then call afternoon morning evening days years okay all these kinds are the nothing but measuring of time only okay not only like one hour two hours a day is and hours minutes so all these are the units of time so how are we going to measure the time and old and is how they are measuring the time okay let us see this figures to understand better See in the time measuring the olden days first the Galileo he is sitting in a okay Galileo is sitting in some church what he is observing when he is sitting in a church the lamp some lamp is hanged.
for the uh, some support so just it is because of the wind the lamp is just oscillating like this it is continuously like periodically it is oscillating okay when it is oscillating periodically even uh, galileo sitting in a church he get on some idea just he check this pulse okay in your hand you want to check your pulse no like that just hold this hand and just check the pulse when he check the pulse the time period how much this is go equally the time period equally the pulse is also beating so from that he get idea and based on some his experiment he uh, invented a simple pendulum okay simple pendulum is also one of the device we going to find the how much the time taken by this bob or this uh, using this thread or length of the bob increases or mass of the bob increases how the time period going to vary so all these things are going to go for higher classes like pu 1 and 2 you're going to understand you want to solve some experiments on the simple pendulum but now try to understand what is simple pendulum has simple pendulum has a small metallic bob suspended from the stand by a thread this is a stand okay we'll just take it from the stand we're going to take and here some support we are going to take and this support we just suspended one bob this is a small uh, weightless we can call it as it is weightless string we neglect this weight of the string and here metallic bob this is what a metallic bob it has some weight okay and some mass also this metallic bob is connected with some thread so this is try to oscillate it this when you just pull it the side and just leave it what happened it will be go like this and come like this go like this come like this so how many oscillations made that we going to count and we have one stopwatch okay we're going to have one stopwatch and to read the timing so when we're going to start leave here when leaving time you're going to put as a zero and how many times it will go let us take 20 oscillation you're going to go after 20 oscillations Okay, after 20 oscillation, how much is the time? Let us take 32 seconds. After it will take to complete 20 oscillation, it will take 32 seconds. Then what is the time period? Time period is nothing but time taken for one oscillation. Time taken for one oscillation. So actually, here to time taken for one oscillation getting is very rare we can't get very precise value precise values suppose you have only one atom we cannot read atom because it's microscope very small so that's why instead of learning about atom we can learn the matter okay we have combination of some atoms we're going to learn like that instead of taking only one reading we're going to take for 20 time 20 readings how many time will take for 20 and divided by that suppose you want to have one book okay you want to buy one book suppose imagine you have buy 10 books 10 books cost is of 100 rupees then what is the cost of one book how are you going to find children now this is a question mark yes very well so to find the book, one book cost what you do do 100 divided by number of the books that is 10 so you get a 10 rupees like that here also time taken for one oscillation is given by time taken t is equals to number 30 total time taken for 20 oscillations okay time taken for total oscillations are n number of n number of oscillations divided by number and now how many number okay here here how many oscillations it is 32 time time to, to time taken for total oscillations is 32 by number of oscillations is 20 okay like this we are going to solve the time period in seconds okay time period of a pendulum okay here first galileo has invented this one time to simple pendulum simple pendulum you know it is a metal bob is suspended with some thread and it is connected to some strand and if the bob is taken to one side and released if you take this side suppose i've taken this bob here and just i'm going to release okay here i'm going to take the bob after pulling the side and just release it moves to and fro Okay, how it will move it will go front and come back go front come back it's two and four so two and four motion of a simple pendulum is nothing but what periodic motion or oscillatory motion clear children this type of motion is also periodic is also called as oscillatory you can see the swinging machine the needle of a swing mission the stitching machine the cloth will stitch with that machine how the needle will go it will go down again come back go down and come back the leg it will be oscillating in the same position that is also example of oscillatory motion i can see suppose the child is seeing is stitching in a cart how it will go seesaw it will go up down up down so all these are example of oscillatory motions clear children this one yeah now try to understand what is oscillation and what is the time period so far we saw yeah 
here oscillation when the bob moves from the mean position see this is what we call as a mean position okay this is the mean position from mean position to it will go to extreme position when it will come to this point what happen its speed completely zero so that again it will go back and again come back to this extreme this is also called as extreme position when it bob it come to this position again its speed becomes zero at this point again it will come back so when they come back to look at sorry even the bob moves from mean position go to a so it means go to a it will go like this and to b it will go o to a and again it will go to b and back to o again it will go like this it will back that means it will complete one circle like this it will from a o to a and again a to b again a back a b to a so a b o let us write okay like this is a circle horizontal circle it will going to complete when the bob moves from extreme position a to the other the extreme position b and back to a it is nothing but what one oscillation what is one oscillation time taken to complete year to year come back to same point again or else you just draw in a graph it will go up to extreme then let's just take this is the mean position this is extreme position it will go to extreme position again come back again go to extreme position opposite direction again come back this is what we call as one complete cycle or one complete oscillation we are children it will go in the go to a again come back again go in opposite direction again come back this total time taken to com complete one the circle that is what we call one oscillation and what is the time period time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation how much time you are going to take to complete this oscillation that is nothing but the time period of a pendulum i hope this is clear children what is the time period okay see this is the activity already what i explained what is the time period of the simple pendulum here setup is just taken one stand and for this stand we taken a thread and a down we connected a metal bob now take one stopwatch okay just we going to take one stopwatch and the stop clock a stopwatch a stop you going to take and set the timing when you going to release the bob you taken the bob to extreme position and going to release once you going to release the bob what happen it will go like this again come back go like this come back when it is come back to this point when you do release no down the time set at the time as zero after it will release so it will go time is going to increasing like this and this is going to oscillating like this so how many times okay how many times it will come back this point let us take you take it as a 20 oscillation for 20 oscillation how much time is taken just note it down let us take time taken for 20 oscillation for 32 and next time taken for 30 oscillation let us take now it is 34 now again it is coming 32 like that so time taken you just noted based on the time taken type find the time period what you will do uh, time period formula is you know time period formula is nothing but total time taken for number of oscillations by number of oscillations 20 so 32 by 20 34 by 20 like that you will do and write here the need it's 1.6 1.7 1.6 like that so take the average of all this 1.6 is more times it is repeating so answer is 1.6 you are children like that you are going to take yeah now we'll see what are the units of time and the speed here you know how you measure the time your fundamental unit time is a fundamental unit Okay, time is a fundamental unit. How are you going to measure this one using the seconds? Okay, children, you measure the time in seconds. One second, two second. Oh, this is the basic or yes, the unit also we call our fundamental units of time also we call so many units. So time you will measure using the seconds and the larger unit of time minutes, hours, days all we going to take. And the basic unit of the speed is that means what you call yes, the unit. Okay. we can call non basic sometimes we going to use the word that is si unit si unit of the speed is seconds so meters per second how you know right speed is equals to distance traveled by time taken when distance we can measure it in meters and the time we measure it in seconds so that we can write take the second up it will come here what happen minus 1 okay meter per second this is what the si unit of the speed and a larger unit means many times we can use this word kilometer per hour from distance between one village to another village we cannot tell in meters per second it will be telling how much speed it will take how much speed of car is moving we can use the word kilometer per hour kilometer per hour so how are you going to convert for meter to kilometer per hour means kilometer we can write as a 1000 meters 
per hour we can write as a 60 minutes into 60 second so it will come 60 into 60 or we can write 30 uh, 36 double zero so you can cancel zeros zeros here and here what you will get remaining 10 by 36 so 10 by 36 you can cancel 5 twos sorry two fives are and two eighteen so, so it will come five by eighteen that means one kilometer per hour is equals to five by eighteen meter per second please remember this relation when you're going to solve the problem this relation is helpful out. instead of solving all this you can directly remember five by eighteen meters per second and ancient ancient time they do not have watches like wrist watches they don't have but what they are using they are using the sundial. Okay, what they are using the sun, the sundial. What is the sundial? It is nothing but a, some stand is there. Suppose here sun is there. Imagine what happened. The light is coming from this end. This is an opaque body. What happened? This opaque body, the light will obstruct. So what happened here? The you get the shadow. Red children, what you will get? You will get the shadow here. That means based on the length of the shadow. Suppose sun is very approaching nearer. The shadow will be more like this when the sun is at the zenith the, the shadow will be only spread like this in the down so again sun will come this position the shadow will go lengthen so based on the length of the shadow okay based on the length of the shadow sun dial going to you can see also here the shadow length is this much that means with this much means what is the time if the shadow length is only here when it will come to here then it is at exactly 12 o'clock it will come to zero so based on the length of the shadow they're going to decide the time that is what the sun dials work you can see in delhi jantar mantar you can observe their sun dial they are fixed one sun dial in jantar mantar and water clock see water is keep on flowing one drop water flows the piston will go little one one millimeter up again it will one two drops will go little up like that when the water level rises this piston is there no that is going rise upward when the piston rising upward here they connected with some screw this will go into come one second two second four second if one drop will get into get into it one needle will go one point at this side one point at this side like that how many drops will fall that all drops will fall they will show it is one hour two hours like that like that one day they're going to set the time and how much water will be getting down that much time they're going to note it this is about the water clocks and again they invented the sand clocks also here the portion you can see a cylindrical portion some sand is there inside this complete sand will come to there to down how much level of that say here yeah, they given a more things so this much level of the sand so this is a time this much is a level of the sand this is a time this much is a level like that based on the level of the sand they go in the markings on the cylinder they're going to identify the time okay children all this about the ancient time how they are using the time how they're measuring the time i hope this is clear to everyone okay what is the speed is i think clear to everyone right children what is speed speed is nothing but distance traveled by time taken or we can write it also as a total distance by total time taken so speed is equals to total distance by total distance by total time taken this is what the speed so here here in case of your cars you can see the instrument called odometer and the speedometers here see here the speedometer of the car this is a speedometer of a car and here you can observe the both the speedometer and odometer here you can see the readings are markings this is what the odometer a two kilometer how much distance moved by the car we can see in this dashboard and here you can see kilometer per hour okay here just a minute here they given no meter kilometer per hour see your unit what is this unit we learn no what is the unit of a space unit of speed it is meters per second in a bigger unit we get it kilometer per hour so this is what the unit of actually the speed in you can observe in your cars and bike this kind of instrument the speedometer plus the odometer also included are separately kilometers per meter per hour is there okay this is also here kilometer per hour is there so this is our units of the speed one side it is a me kilometer and one side meters both are in motion no? this is what a speedometer what is the use of speedometer is a device okay it is a device used to measure the speed of the vehicles in kilometer per hour Again, if you know kilometer per if you want to find, just multiply with 5 by 18, you will get in meter per second also. Okay, next odometer, it is a distance device which measures the distance covered by the vehicle. Remember the word yes for speed to measure the speed and odometer D for 
distance to measure the distance remember odometer the word is d is highlighting d for distance and the speedometer the speed s is highlighting so this for speed s for speed d for distance remember odometer and the speedometer these are the instruments or devices used to measure the speed and distance in the vehicles or automobiles Yes, children. So, for what we learned, what is the formula of the speed? This is equals to distance by time taken. So, all they cannot understand how to find the distance by substituting the formula division. Many times we don't know. Very fastly we cannot divide, put the values. We don't have calculators. Some big numbers are there. Very difficult us to calculate. But the everyone can understand by seeing visualization is very easy we can visualize and we can tell which is fast and which is slow so that is why to understand the graphs of distance time graph by seeing that we can tell which graph moves uh, which is more and which is for moving faster which is moving slower by seeing the graphs let us understand what is the distance time graph so we can take x-axis and y-axis this is you can take it as a y-axis and this you're going to take it as a x-axis x-axis and the y-axis you can take two coordinates here x coordinate represent always the time in minutes okay time in minutes or seconds you can take and the distance in kilometers or we can take it in the meters also distance always we can take distance along y-axis and the time along x-axis this is what we call distance time graph or we can tell y and the x at time always we can take y and x-axis distance along y and x time along x-axis distance time graph of a car is shown in the table let us take one of the car is moving on a road okay imagine one car is moving on a road after one minute okay in a zero minute when it is at starting at rest when it is starting at rest so in the zero time it is at a zero distance imagine of the particle is here in the zero minute it is not moving it is at rest and next one minute you can see after one minute time it is covered a distance of one kilometer okay imagine after one minute after one minute body cover car comes to this position car will be at here now next after one minute again after time one minute body is at two kilometers okay it is not one sorry change it it is two kilometers after two minutes car body come to two kilometers distance after three minutes body is at here at the four minute body is at here five minute body is at here that means at every minute the body is going to increasing its speed okay that means see or let us draw the graph of it see the time taken here time along which axis time is along x axis and distance is along y axis i think in mass you have experience of drawing the graphs now see if this is in a one minute in one minute where is a car along the go x axis one minute car is at distance of one kilometer this is one kilometer let's just draw one point next draw two kilometers three kilometers four kilometers five kilometers like that so draw join all the points you will get the light so go like this just you taken one minute second third so here distance traveled one kilo one minute one second minute two kilometer fourth minute four kilometers so here we can represent two three four like that one two three four so like that in one minute, so uh, finally join uh, this line. So we'll get the distance time graph. By seeing this distance time graph, we can easily tell object is moving slower or faster. Okay, everything we're going to decide. So this line is, if the line is passing through the horizon, it's a straight line. Okay, the straight line passing through the horizon, we can see equal distance traveled in one kilometer, one minute also one kilometer, second minute is also again one kilometer, third minute one kilometer. That means equal distance traveled in equal interval of time, in equal time, equal distance, equal time, equal distance. So this is what we call as a uniform motion or uniform speed. Clear children, what is uniform motion? If the straight line passing through the horizon, this is called, called as a uniform speed or uniform motion let us take another type uh, graph here if the particle is moving like this okay it is not non-uniform if the speed is going see but the distance is not increasing up to some point again it is increasing very slowly after some okay after some time you can also here one minute two minutes three minutes four minutes it is the distance is not increasing so gradually it is increasing again so slow again increasing so it is not uniform uniform means it will come like this it is non-uniform motion if the curve is like this this is what non-uniform motion suppose if the graph is parallelly 
if a graph is parallel to x axis that means what a time axis in one minute second minute third minute you can see in all the minutes the body is at only two kilometers it is not at all moving it is not increasing distance not decreasing distance it will be at rest now okay the body if the graph or a line is parallel to the x axis then we can call that as a body is at rest position it is not moving and suppose like if you draw graph like this this is not possible okay this type of graph is not possible because in a given time in a two minutes of a time in a second minute body of this distance body at a two kilometer body 50 kilometer is possible no it is not possible because the same person cannot be existing two villages at the same time simultaneously right that is not possible graph it is actually we cannot write this even though one more possible it is uh, decreasing if this is a speed keep on decreasing your speed increasing okay this is the about distance time graph or we can sometimes in a cbsc question they give a car a is this and a car b is this and who is fast and who is slow here so to understand this type of question this is a distance and the time you can see now just to write one line perpendicular to a time axis let us take at a two minutes three minutes four minutes at a two minutes of a distance car a travel a distance of let us take distance one two three okay three kilometers it is traveled in a two minutes okay children try to understand in a two minutes car a travels how much car a travels for three kilometers but car b c in a three in a three minutes in a second minute car, car travel only one kilometer so in a two minutes okay in a two minutes car b travels car b travels what only one kilometer it will travel only one kilometer here it will travel three kilometers in a two minutes here travel in a two minutes it will cover only one minute so that this will be the faster and this will be the slow so still logical easy way to represent is you see the angle okay here to here angle is more okay i'll write one more color but if here angle you can see okay this is also not good color okay you observe your angle is less okay your angle is less means it is the slow here to your angle you can observe your more angle okay here to your length is more angle is more angle so it is fast okay like that we are going to understand the speed time graphs okay all this about your speed time graphs and the lesson so so far what we understand children in the old lesson what is motion motion with respect to reference frame and with respect to time position is changing then body is said to be in motion if it is not changing then body is said to be at a rest position and what is time some event is happening at the situation so time we're going to measure using second distance we're going to measure using meters so uh, speed we can define the speed using distance traveled by time taken and we can also represent total distance by total time unit is meters per second this is a highlight points what we learned in this chapter and simple pendulum time period of simple pendulum is uh, number of oscillations time taken for number of oscillation by n so like this we calculate the time period of the pendulum right children and olden days and nowadays what are the different units they going to use different devices they going to use to find okay i hope this chapter is clear okay children thank you all for watching for this lesson if you have any doubts still please once again please watch it then clear your doubts, prepare for the exam. All the best children. Have a nice day.